So let's go over the deltoid muscle. What I'd like to do is I'd like to go over how to release the soft tissue, get into the integration of some acupuncture points, in terms of referred to as the fascial expansion, and then I would actually like to get into a little bit of the osseous component. So it's always a matter of soft tissue, looking at some of the fascia, connective tissue, with the integration of traditional Chinese medicine and looking at joint manipulation. So let's get into the deltoid muscle. We're going to go over three parts, the anterior, medial, and posterior. Now it's kind of an interesting muscle because it's a rounded triangular muscle on the upper arm of the shoulder. Now, if we start getting into looking at where it actually attaches to, all the way around here, we're looking at attachments from the clavicle, the acromion, the spine of the scapula, so all posterior here. So get in there. I'm going to get, make you bring your arm up here. Why don't we start in the posterior aspect over here first? I'll get back here. Now, take your arm down. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, take it right across a bit more. Good. Doing that quite a bit? Yeah. Good. Up. So the insertion is actually farther down, all three of them insert on the deltoid tuberosity. You okay there? So I'm just oh, the post yeah. here. Then I'll start moving around, maybe to the medial aspect. Feeling that a bit? Yes. Good. And I start going down the front here, so I'm gonna get you to take your arm and go posterior here. Okay. okay. Take it down and back. Good. Now, as we're working through here, we should also take into consideration the uh, nerve supply, which is the axillary nerve which comes from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. You okay? Oh yeah. Good. Now the anterior fibers, which I'm on right now, they're involved in shoulder abduction when the arm is externally rotated. And they're also involved in flexion and internal rotation. Okay, now the medial fibers here, take it down. I'm going right near the attachment here, but I could work my way down here a bit. Medial fibers move the shoulder into abduction, and I get on the posterior fibers here. You okay? Oh yeah. These are involved in extension and external rotation. Now this is a really important muscle in general, but involved in a lot of different sports, and it works in conjunction with the rotator cuff muscles and it basically works for shoulder stabilization during movement, especially in abduction. Okay, you okay there? Oh yeah. So we get right down where the insertion is. Feeling that right there on the uh, deltoid tuberosity. Take it in a bit. Oh, you're really feeling that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Take it down again. And I can move out in different vectors, fanning out anterior, medial, and posterior. Okay. Excellent. So what I want to go over now is if we're working on the deltoid muscle, some of the TCM, fascial integrations, so working in acupuncture points, looking around the area, I could go over quite a few of them, about six in this area, but I'm just going to cover a few of them just for an example. Okay. So let's get on the first one here, which is GB16. Now, GB16, I'm going to get you to turn your head here, Mickey, the other way. Go up, and we're going to go on the Midline of the nape of the neck, just below the external occipital protuberance. Take it right down here. And I'm just going to stimulate this area in here. Now you might say, how is this possibly going to affect the shoulder? Well, this modulates the central nervous system, enhances parasympathetic activity. So we're talking about getting out of fight or flight responses. And this is actually a pretty effective thing, and it actually increases blood flow in the entire upper extremity. You doing okay there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. If I was stimulating that point, I would stimulate it for, could be just 30 seconds to three minutes. That feels pretty tight on you right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So the next point I would like to talk about a little bit here is small intestine 15. This is on the upper back, about two chun. So moving over slightly here from C7 vertebrae. So let's go down, particular prominence here, take it over. You okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. So about two points there, but right there. How are we doing there? Oh, that's awesome. So you'll say, what also, what does this do for the shoulder? So this again enhances local blood flow, reduces muscle tension, and it also modulates uh, nervous activity. 
And it's quite interesting because this particular one here will actually increase shoulder mobility and give some pain relief. You okay there? Oh yeah. No problem there? No. So don't just go clockwise, counterclockwise, but get in there and really move that area around a bit. Does that feel pretty good? Oh yeah. <laughs> good. So this is small intestine 15. So the next point I'm gonna go on is small intestine 10. This is on the posterior of the shoulder and it's inferior to the scapular spine. So I'm gonna follow the scapular spine right over, crease up from there in this area right here. Is that very sensitive right there? Yeah. Real sensitive. Again, this will help to increase joint mobility, enhances local circulation and reduces muscle tension. Once again, by modulating nervous system activity, Good. And overall, it helps to reduce fascial restrictions. So let me get in there a little bit like this. Now, as I'm going over these points, I'm going over them fairly fast. If you actually go to our playlist on traditional Chinese medicine, you're gonna find each of these points if you'd like more detail. And there's both the individual points and also we have sections on fascial expansions. So we've got a lot of information on this for you in there about 70 some videos. There we go. You okay? Oh yeah. Good. So this is small intestine 10. So one thing I want to talk about, anytime you're dealing with a particular structure, always consider the soft tissue, get into the fascia, that's where we get into the fascial expansions, but also don't forget to address osseous restrictions. And you say, well, I'm over to the side here, the deltoid, so it should just be the humerus, but no, it's not. You've got areas around there where the spinal restrictions will influence the shoulder in the periphery. So let's just take a look around. You okay with me, Justin? You there, Mickey? Oh, yeah. Okay. Slide down a little bit. I'm just going to check the mid thoracic area, see if that's restricted at all. I have to laugh at some of the videos on the internet. You'll see restrictions, and I know it's an area that doesn't make much sound, and I'll have this giant cavitation. And I'm going, oh, yeah, they, they definitely, you know, added something onto that one. <laughs> you okay? Oh, yeah. Down, now you got some right here. Lift your head up. There we go. Okay, now you guys come over the edge here. Let me just take the shoulder in general here. Go through range. Doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just take it a little bit internal, a little bit external there. You okay there? Mm -hmm. Of course, I'd work my way around, take a look. Not too much going on the AC joint there. Mm -hmm. And I would go over from the clavicle. I might take a look at the sternoclavicular joint, which I don't think you have a problem there right now. Mm -hmm. Good. So, again, do not forget to address osseous restrictions in the surrounding area. 